So we got a call for a 45-year-old male. Shortness of the breaths. All right, I can dig it. Have you ever passed out? Almost. Just trying to put a car on a trailer that didn't run and the winch broke. It's hot. Mad, kicked the side of the car and broke my toe. Ugh. Sat down, I was like, oh, God, I'm about to pass out. <laughs> but I didn't. The toes, though. Yeah, they hurt. Why do you think it's so painful? I think it's one of God's jokes. <laughs> Most painful experience you'll ever have. Right, to get a kidney ripped out <laughs> right. by Captain Hook, <laughs> Rusty Hook. Exactly. And it feel better than stubbing a toe. Don't mess with the toes. 32, 32. Awesome. Okay, do you have, you have any medical asthma? history? Asthma? <coughs> Bronchitis. <coughs> Take some deep breaths so I can hear you lungs. I can't. Take a deep breath. Yes, you can. I'm you struggling, can trying to breathe. Okay, calm down. When we arrive, I see he's sitting upright in a chair. He looks a little anxious, but doesn't look to be in too much distress. But he's taking short, little, rapid right. breaths. Let's get you sitting right here so we can see what your oxygen level is, OK? He says he has a history of asthma. So I listen to his lungs, and initially they sound clear, although it's hard to tell because he's so anxious. I can't breathe. You're fine. I can't You're breathe. fine. You are. <clears throat> You're talking. You're breathing. You have to trust us. It hurts. So, I mean, immediately with a 30-year-old person, your brain is going to go to anxiety. Whoa, 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 don't come in here upset. You got to calm down, because we trying to calm him down. Woosa, everybody woosa. Yeah, Who's this to you? you? That's funny. Oh, okay. What kind of medical problems do you have? Any? Oh, uh, yeah. His pressure goes from, like, under or something. Mm -hmm. Is he have heart failure? Not She's not exactly saying the words heart failure to us, but this lets us know his heart is obviously not working properly. Ooh, you sweat now. You got to calm down, baby. Let me get your pressure. Hey, hey. My calm. Hold on, baby. My yeah. okay. He's like 240 pounds. Once I get that blood pressure, I realize that he is having an episode of flash pulmonary edema your lungs rapidly fill with extracellular fluid. OK, look, 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 look. Under your tongue, under your tongue. Listen, lift up your tongue. Yeah. Look at me. It's essentially drowning without water. And because it happens so rapidly, someone's more likely to die. Breathe, this is oxygen. Breathe, breathe. Down, man. Yeah, I can't breathe. Open, open, chew and swallow, chew and swallow. This is like pressurized oxygen, OK? So what might be happening is you might be having fluid that's accumulating in your lungs. Which is what so this, this is going to help. It's going right. to help push it out. When your heart is just all in all out failing and it's not pumping correctly, the fluid starts to back up. And the first place it wants to go is your lungs. Slow deep breath. So he has had fluid in his lungs before. OK, so he has heart failure. All right, we got some dysrhythmia going on, too. Either his heart is going to give out and he's going to go into cardiac arrest, or he's going to stop breathing and go into respiratory arrest. Just go. All right. Fuck it. 35, 35-year-old male patient, black pulmonary edema. He went from a heart rate of the 120 to a heart rate of 64. I don't have a line right now. I do have aspirin and nitro on board. I'm going to try to put nitro base and get a line, but we'll be there in like three. All right, baby, I need to get an IV on you, so you're going to have to keep your hands still for me for just one second, OK? You're doing good. You're doing good. Don't pull it. Don't pull it. We're almost there. Ooh, you are soaking wet. Leave it there. Leave it there. Doing good. Doing real good. Don't move. Don't move. Doing good. Doing real good. We're almost there. I mean, he wasn't moving much air, but he was re relatively clear when we first got there. And then, but, and see, that's the thing is, like, looking at him, I was like, I think I hear rails, but he's taking those short guppy breaths. So looking anything. at him, it's almost like you look like you're flashing, but mm -hmm. you're 34. Right. Exactly. What was so shocking about this call was purely his age. You don't go into a call for shortness of breath of a 30-year-old male thinking flash pulmonary edema. You're thinking everything but that. That's sad to be that young and have heart failure. All right, well, I'm going to go get some signatures and see if he's gotten tubed yet. I'll go continue to clean up your mess. Sorry, they, these things happen. <laughs> Critical patients and all. Thank you, 20-year-old female short of breath. Lieutenant Reed. 
It says she has no lung problems, no asthma, nothing like that. So it's probably an anxiety attack. 2151. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? What's going on? What am I here for? We get to the call, and she's sitting on the couch. And you can tell it's more. It's not just anxiety. It's not just I'm upset. She's sitting in the chair, and she is focusing on breathing and holding her chest. She has stents in her OK. How old are you? 20. 20? OK. Family tells us she has congenital heart problems. She's had multiple stints placed and over eight ablations. Everything we had thought this call was going to be automatically switched. Breathe real, real easy. I'm going to take a picture of your heart. The stiller you hold, the better picture I get. So we immediately put her on the monitor, check it out. She's extremely tachycardic, which means fast heart rate. And now we truly have a critical patient. Three in the second. Two, three. Good job. Good job. Uh, three, three. Okay. 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 Yeah. Go. So we're going to get you on the stretcher, my baby, and take you over to Children's, OK? 6249. You could just tell by the look on her face and kind of in her eyes that she was really hurting. <laughs> so you, it's because you're getting anxious too, baby, because you're not feeling well. So that's kind of that's what kind of causes that. Look, you're in good hands, baby. We're gonna take care of you. <laughs> She has stents in, too. We're poking your arm, baby, OK? One, two, three. Big, easy, deep breaths, OK? All right, my baby, I want you to chew these up for me, OK? It's aspirin, OK? I know it hurts. I know it's scary. You, Mom? Yeah. Hey, baby, how you doing? All right, all right. Deep breaths. Think of something positive. It's sad to see people that young with that horrible health problem. Just You're going to be all right. Breaths. Some deep breaths, OK? It's hard to watch a mother go through that with her daughter. All right, Mama, you ready? Yeah. All right, darling. I'm a father again. Yeah. We're in route to Children's. Gotta be 2208. You're breathing real, real fast right now. Try taking a big breath into your nose. Hold it for a second and out your mouth, OK? She's got to have a lot of struggles. She's got to have a lot of pain. You're going to be all right, OK? And I can't be there for her in all those situations, but for this one moment, I can. 3228 Hospital. Hey, we are here. You look like you're doing a little better. <laughs> Dude, like, all my dad wanted was a boy. And then, like, my two older sisters came out. Three wild girls. <laughs> Yeah, they and then they had you. Like, so <laughs> hard to try to make me a boy. So, like, they did, like, all the home remedies. And it's, like, eating certain foods and, like, keeping the temperature at, like, a certain whatever. And then you just came out a whole demon. Response <laughs> three. I'm 57 year old male, short of breath. He is in obvious distress. There is no evidence of coronavirus. These respiratory calls. Every night, we're going through all of these medications. And it's not just, oh, they need some oxygen, and they're fine. No, By the time like we get you there, walk in there, and they're like, borderline <gasps> failure. Yeah. I like the way you put it, man. They sound like you're blowing bubbles in a milk carton. The oxygen tanks are outside. As soon as we arrive, we notice that there's oxygen bottles that are on the front porch. That's always a telltale sign that that's where you're going and that that person is going to have some kind of lung problems. Hello? What's going on? Yeah, again. You got a trait? You take breathing treatments? Yeah. yeah? OK. What's your name, my man? Victor. Victor. We don't come across trachs that often, like trachs they come with different problems. The trachs can become clogged. The trachs can become infected. The trachs can come out. Like, so you can't treat a trach patient like a person that, like, breathes, like me and you. You got to treat them differently, because most of the time, they breathe through that trach. You have COPD? You've been struggling like that for the last couple days? I went to the ER, and it kept me for about four days. I got on bed rest. You been sick with anything, or this happens all the time? Uh, it happens from time oh. to time. Gotcha. The effects of what he has, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, like a scar tissue that's building up inside of his lungs. It's a chronic problem. 137 over 71. 
Yeah. What hospital do you go to, baby? Veterans. Oh, okay. Or oh, Marine Corps. Marine Corps? Yeah. How long did you serve? I did six years. What made you get out? Uh, bombs. That's a good reason. <laughs> Is that breathing treatment helping you any? Because your your uh, your oxygen saturation's going up. Yeah, that's probably helping. Perfect. We don't know what triggered the reaction that he had tonight, and we have to make sure it doesn't happen again. He needs to be in the hospital because he may need continuous breathing treatments and continuous oxygen, because that little breathing treatment that we gave him, it's not going to fix the bigger issue. Right now. I want to just go for straight. You feel like it's panic. Yeah, I'm trying to keep from panic. Yeah, I'm You want to put that right over there? All right. You feel like just the oxygen's helping you out? Yeah. All right, good deal. We'll hopefully get your O2 sets up. What does the VA usually do to get you all fixed up? Uh, steroids. Antibiotics. So how long have you been suffering from this? Uh, got diagnosed with it probably about two years ago. I don't know how long I had it, so my life expectancy is three or five. Really? So they're trying to give me some new lungs. You on the wait list for a trans? <laughs> I can really use those. You on the wait list for a transplant? Yeah. It's not something that we encounter too often when people are on waiting lists for transplants. What it really does tell me is that obviously this is a very serious situation. Like this guy is very, very, very sick and I need to make sure that I stay on my toes to watch the monitor, to watch him and make sure that he gets the treatment that he needs. I was a law for 19 years, New Jersey and Atlanta. What caused you to come here? I retired. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a barbecue business here. Uh-huh. Yeah. I've been for about four or five years so I started getting sicker. So you used to cook barbecue? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, what? Don't tell Jeanette that. She'll jump on you. Damn. <laughs> I have good girls following me all over the city. Oh, I believe it. I absolutely believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I heard you got the best meat in town. I said, try the barbecue. I'll try the barbecue. We're going to a 54-year-old female, shortness of breath, who has a history of asthma. You can go the other way. I'm just going to go straight down the pizza. It's really, really bumpy this way, though. I honestly didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. It's really bumpy. Super direct route, though. Oh, my God. So sorry. <laughs> well, I learned something tonight. Don't take Louisa. You're in the area. Agreed. Hey, darling. We're going to get you taken care of. How long have you been short of breath, baby? Started two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? But I've been taking every day. OK. I just come back from an event. Hey, Got it. Mm. You got bronchitis, baby. I got it. Okay. Rest, come on, keep coming. Oh yeah, you're you're wheezing, darling. I just took a treatment at about eight thirty. The fact that she took a breathing treatment and she's still feeling this way is a huge red flag. We need to get her in the ambulance with her exerting herself as little as possible. And I've been taking them. I had to take them every four hours. And I've been taking them. Let me see this arm, baby. I'm an Indian, and I was clean for a year. Two years in a row. OK. Is that what you were doing? So that's where you were tonight? Yes, we select another queen. Come Big on. poke, baby. Oh, geez. Oh, no. All right. All done. He said this is worse than it normally is. <laughs> What's going on, baby? Baby, have you ever had that mask that pushes air at your face? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put one of those on you. She had a lot of fluid in her lungs. And the CPAP pushes the fluid out of the lungs and lets the air go in. You ready? Do this. Code 3 University. Time is of the essence with her because she's not getting any better. You all right? You can show us Code 3 to University. Hey, baby, you all right? 
Keep your eyes open for me. I need you to keep breathing, okay? Take a big, deep breath for me. Big, deep breath. You got this. Time is of the essence with her. She's not getting better. She's getting worse. I'm driving like crazy. I know Landon's in the back doing everything that he can do. Hey, Doc, this is Landon on 3215. I have a 54-year-old female patient. Chief complaint, shortness of breath, history of asthma, inspiratory, expiratory, wheezing throughout, extremely labored breathing, 45 times a minute. Right now, I have her on a duo nev, and I've given 125 of solumetrol. Would you like me to hang two grams of mag and 250 over 10 minutes? I'm going to go ahead and give the mag. Thank you, doctor. Nothing I've given her is turning her around. She's continuing to decline. Both medications that I'm going to put into that nebulizer treatment are going to dry up secretions and try to loosen her lungs up a little bit. Hey, baby, how you doing? You doing better or worse? OK, keep this. Can you make a fist with this hand for me? Make a fist with that hand. Go on to MST University. Yeah, hey, this landed on 3215. Be advised, you may want to have RSI set up. She's uh, getting more and more fatigued. Thank you, Susan. I mean, I radio the hospital and let them know that this patient is critical. They are spiraling down, and they need to be prepared to RSI her as soon as we walk through those doors. Wake up for me. Wake up. Baby, open your eyes. Wake up. You OK? Keep your eyes open for me. I need you to keep breathing, OK? Take a big, deep breath for me. She starts slipping in and out of consciousness. She'll go out and then wake up and take a couple more breaths. There's no extra time here. She's one of those patients I'm going to remember. I know she's in great hands, and I know that the, that the team of doctors at university is going to take really good care of her. We got you, darling, OK? City of New Orleans, 911, what's the emergency? My uncle need an ambulance. He cannot breathe. Is he responding appropriately? Every time he responds, he got to take breaks. Did he have any flu-like symptoms prior to this? No. OK, I'm sending the paramedics to help you now. Now for 3251, can I have a 6060-year-old 60 male short of breath? We're going to a 60-year-old male who's short of breath, difficulty speaking between breaths. He does not have an inhaler, no evidence of coronavirus, which means he probably has coronavirus. We're just kind of throwing out different ideas of what it could be. We're thinking it could be CHF, it could be COVID. So we're just kind of trying to prepare ourselves for uh, what we may find on scene. How you doing, my friend? Been short of breath for, the, for how long? Uh, also since, since 2005. Since 2005. Has the oxygen help that they put you on? No, 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 but this right here is oxygen. Has this helped you breathe it? Is this thing here helping you right now? OK. OK. All right, my friend. So we're going to get you outside, get you on the stretcher, take you to our truck, do a few more things in there, OK? So this patient has a pacemaker. Automatically, anyone with a pacemaker, we're always wondering if their shortness of breath is caused by any sort of cardiac issue. So COVID is still on the table, but it's a lower differential diagnosis. He was breathing awfully hard, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So listen, I'm going to try to get another blood pressure on you. I want to try to give you some nitroglycerin. I think that may help you breathe better. Ooh, this stuff's working. It is working. Hey, your pacemaker's working. That's always a good thing. He told me it was off for a while. I'm glad it ain't off right now. Mm-hmm. All right, my You friend. said no chest pain, right? You don't know. It's not like a real pain. You're right. Irritating. Irritating how? We got time. Start explaining. Is it like a pressure, like a tickling? Yeah, like a little pressure. Like a pressure? All right. So I'm going to spray some nitro under your tongue, all right? So do me a favor. Open your mouth real wide. Lift your tongue all the way up. There we go. Oftentimes, a breathing problem is actually a heart problem. And given this patient's history, that's what I think is going on. Now, I want you to tell us if that makes you feel better. Nitroglycerin allows the heart to work more efficiently. All right, buddy, you can feel a stick in your hand, OK? Relax this arm. We just let it fall down. Let it fall. Let it fall. There you go. You gotta relax. You doing all right? You can't breathe. Yeah, all right. Good. Check and see if he's in VTAC. Okay. Can you breathe? I know. 
Listen to me, okay? Your pacer stopped, so we're gonna pace you, okay? Just relax. Gotta relax. We're responding to a male complaining of shortness of breath, and all of a sudden, his pacemaker has stopped working. So right now, he's at risk for his heart stopping completely. I'm gonna lean you forward. We externally put the defibrillation pads on him because our monitor has a pacemaker setting. How you feel? Talk to me. Might be better. Hey, man, don't you let that damn pacemaker stop again. Luckily, his pacemaker then starts to work again, and we don't actually need to deliver any sort of external electricity from our monitor. How do you feel right now? Better than when we first got here? That spray of nitro helped, didn't it? You know, that's one of those cases where we do everything right and then something bad happened in spite of everything we did. <laughs> did you see a light? OK. All right. All right. Good. Good. Don't let it. <laughs> this man's pacemaker has stopped working. It's, it's malfunctioning. It's not firing all the time when it's supposed to. It will intermittently stop, which is causing him shortness of breath. And once that pacemaker is replaced, all of his symptoms should dissipate. We thought we lost you. Has that ever happened before? All right, yeah. Not like that. Damn certain you need to see a doctor. I can't see nothing. You want me to get out? Yeah, because I can't see like this corner very well because it dips. Oh. Come straight. 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 I know I hear you, but the wheels are turned. <laughs> All right, you're good to turn. <laughs> Felt like you were turning right, and I was like, "No, straight." As the whole wheel is like, I was like, "Oh God, what what way is straight right now?" Part three threes, male short of breath, negative for flu symptoms. So we're going to a 54-year-old male that's complaining of shortness of breath and difficulty speaking between breaths. That's pretty much all the information that we got. Hi. You short of breath? Your inhaler wasn't working. You ran out? Okay, my baby, you think you can take a couple steps right down the stairs? He says he's having an asthma attack, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get him in the back of the truck and we're gonna start him on a breathing treatment. So I need to pull As me and Jeanette are getting our patient into the back of the unit, you know, we kind of see this guy that's making his way pretty much into the scene. And we don't know who this guy is, so at this moment, we're just gonna kind of dismiss him. We don't know what he wants, we don't know what he needs. Right now, we have other things to worry about. I'm about to try to kill. Ah, 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 ah. Don't, don't hop up in here. I'm about to try to kill. I'm about to try to kill. Who trying to kill you? They're trying to kill me, I don't know. Please, please, please help. Me and Jeanette, we got a call for a male patient with shortness of breath. And I see this guy, like, persistently just kind of lingering around, like, the scene. And that just makes me feel uneasy, because I don't know what he's trying to do there. I got a wanderer requesting please, saying he did a lot of drugs and somebody's trying to kill him. Can you just create me another item? All right, come on. All right. yep. Either he has some kind of psych issue or somebody's really trying to kill him. It's one of the two. You want to go to the hospital? What you want? I want to go to the hospital. All right. Stay right there. All right. I mean, you know that dude that's out there? He's always around here. Yeah. Just give me. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there and stay. I tell him to sit in the captain's chair, and I'm like, just don't move, don't mess with nothing, don't touch nothing, just stay right there. You was just in the hospital? Yeah. For what, the same thing? Yeah. Well, why you keep doing drugs, my mans? You gotta try to find help so you can get off of them. 
Because ain't nobody out here trying to kill you. That's all in your head. But we're trying to get everything done with our respiratory patient. We're trying to get vital signs on our second patient. We want to make sure that it's a safe situation and we have a safe transport. Since this dude came up and started requesting our help and stuff, we got to take him too with us. But I'm going to try and make sure no, he don't bother you, okay? Yeah, you all right, my baby. Thank you for being cool with us. I know. <laughs> You want to switch, take his CBG, I'm going to get an IV on him. Steroids going to get you feeling right, too, OK? Is anybody coming? Nobody's coming. We're going to bring you to the hospital. We came for one patient, and we left with two. <laughs> Only in New Orleans does something like this happen. Only in New Orleans does someone just try to hitch a ride to the hospital. God, you got to love it. You got to love it here. <laughs> You never know, man. <laughs> Dude, the city throws you them curveballs, bro. Be safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Grand <laughs> Grand they're not dead. I can work with that.